Panama Canal, a 51-mile engineering marvel connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, has been a cornerstone of global trade since its opening in 1914. Handling approximately 6% of global maritime trade, it facilitates the movement of goods valued at around $270 billion annually, with the United States being the largest user, accounting for 40% of U.S. container ship transits. However, recent years have seen the canal facing unprecedented challenges due to water scarcity, primarily driven by drought conditions exacerbated by climate change and the El Nino phenomenon. This has led to restrictions on daily ship transits, causing significant disruptions to global supply chains and prompting a race to find solutions or alternatives. The canal has a critical role in world trade. The value of trade at stake and the competitive efforts to address the canal's operational constraints are enormous. Whether through enhancing its infrastructure, securing new water sources, or developing alternative transportation routes, the drive to solve this problem has never been higher. The big headache for the Panama Canal is that it's running low on water, plain and simple. This isn't just a small hiccup, it's a serious problem made worse by a mix of nature's curveballs and well. Us, think of Lake Gatun, the canal's main water source, as a giant bathtub that's slowly draining. We're talking record-breaking low levels in the past couple of years. The Panama Canal's efficiency relies heavily on fresh water from Gatun Lake to operate its lock system, with each transit consuming approximately 200 million liters of water. Recent droughts, intensified by climate change, have reduced water levels, forcing the Panama Canal Authority, ACP, to limit daily transits and impose draft restrictions, such as capping vessel drafts at 44 feet for Neopanamax locks. In 2023, these restrictions led to significant backlogs, with shipping companies paying millions to bypass queues, highlighting the canal's vulnerability. Additionally, toll increases to fund maintenance and expansion, coupled with geopolitical rhetoric, such as U.S. President-elect Donald Trump's December 2024 remarks about reclaiming the canal, have spurred interest in alternatives. These factors underscore the need for viable substitutes, prompting countries to propose ambitious projects. As of March 24, 2025, nations like Nicaragua and Mexico, as well as others in Central and South America, are actively projecting substitutes, ranging from canals to rail corridors that could reshape maritime logistics and challenge the Panama Canal's dominance. Nicaragua, a Central American nation with a long-standing ambition to rival Panama, stands to challenge it by proposing its own interoceanic canal. As of March 24, 2025, Nicaragua's latest efforts to develop an alternative waterway reflect both historical aspirations and contemporary geopolitical shifts, though significant challenges persist. The idea of a Nicaraguan canal dates back to the 19th century when it competed with Panama as a potential U.S.-backed route. In 1902, the U.S. opted for Panama due to its shorter distance and fewer volcanic risks, leaving Nicaragua's dream dormant. The concept resurfaced in 2013 when Nicaragua granted a 50-year concession to the Hong Kong-Nicaragua Canal Development Investment Company, led by Chinese businessman Wang Jing. This ambitious $50 billion project aimed to construct a 172-mile canal, three times longer than Panama's, capable of handling supertankers too large for Panama's locks. However, by 2018, financial woes, environmental protests, and Wang's loss of wealth stalled the initiative, culminating in its cancellation in May 2024. Undeterred, Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega unveiled a new plan in November 2024 at a China-Latin America summit in Managua. This 445-kilometer waterway would connect bluefields on the Caribbean coast to Puerto Coronto on the Pacific via Lake Zolotlanalan, bypassing Lake Nicaragua to mitigate environmental concerns. Ortega has courted Chinese and Russian investment, with the Chinese firm Camsi signing on to develop Bluefields Port. Proponents argue this canal could alleviate Panama's congestion, where transits dropped 29% in the last two years due to drought, and boost Nicaragua's economy, potentially doubling its GDP through jobs and trade. Yet, the project faces formidable obstacles. Estimated costs exceed Nicaragua's economic capacity, 
and no concrete funding has been secured. Environmentalists warn of ecosystem disruption, even with the revised route, while the canal's length raises doubts about its competitiveness against Panama's 80-kilometer path. Geopolitical tensions, including U.S. opposition to Chinese influence, further complicate matters. Historically, Nicaragua's canal dreams have faltered due to financial, technical, and political hurdles, and this iteration may follow suit without robust international backing. Nicaragua's pursuit reflects a persistent vision to rival Panama, driven by economic ambition and shifting global alliances. While technically feasible, its realization hinges on overcoming past pitfalls, making it a bold but uncertain contender in the evolving landscape of global trade routes. Mexico is advancing a different approach with its interoceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. As of March 2025, this ambitious land-based project aims not to replace the canal outright but to complement it, offering a faster, more resilient option for cargo transit while boosting Mexico's economic prospects. This interoceanic corridor, spanning 303 kilometers across Mexico's narrowest point, connects the Pacific port of Salina Cruz to the Gulf of Mexico via a modernized railway, highways, and industrial zones. Revived under President Andrés Manuel López Obrador, the $2.8 billion project builds on a railway established in 1907 with significant upgrades since 2018. By December 2023, passenger trains were operational and freight services are projected to handle 1.4 million containers annually by 2033, rivaling Panama's 7 million TEUs. Mexico touts the corridor as a cost-effective alternative, avoiding Panama's water scarcity issues. Each canal transit consumes 200 million liters and reducing shipping times for certain routes by up to 1,000 nautical miles. The project's strategic advantages are clear. Unlike Panama's maritime locks, the CC each relies on rail and road, sidestepping climate-related disruptions. It integrates 10 industrial parks to attract manufacturing, leveraging Mexico's proximity to the U.S. amid nearshoring trends. Investments, including $50 million from firms like Moda Engel, signal confidence, while ports are being dredged to accommodate larger vessels. Mexican officials argue it could ease Panama's congested option, where drought-induced restrictions cut transits by 29% in 2023, 2024, and compete with U.S. West Coast ports strained by labor disputes. However, challenges abound. Trains carry far fewer containers, around 2,000, than ships up to 15,000, limiting scale. Environmentalists decry potential ecosystem damage in Oaxaca and Veracruz, while indigenous communities protest land displacement. Funding remains a concern, with costs potentially escalating beyond initial estimates. Critics also question whether the CEA-80 can truly rival Panama's established infrastructure, suggesting it may serve more as a regional hub than a global replacement. Mexico's corridor reflects a pragmatic shift toward land-based alternatives, capitalizing on its geography and economic ambitions. While not poised to supplant the Panama Canal entirely, it offers a complementary route that could reshape trade dynamics, particularly for North America. That is if logistical and social hurdles are addressed effectively. Further south, countries like Brazil, Bolivia, and Peru, with China's backing, are developing the Central Bioceanic Railway. Often heralded as the Panama Canal of the 21st century, represents a bold and transformative infrastructure initiative aimed at redefining trade and connectivity across South America. Spanning approximately 3,750 kilometers, this proposed rail network seeks to connect the Atlantic port of Santos in Brazil to the Pacific port of Ilo in Peru, cutting through Bolivia and potentially incorporating Paraguay. Conceived during a 2013 summit between Bolivian President Evo Morales and Chinese President Xi Jinping, the project aspires to circumvent the Panama Canal's growing limitations, such as drought-related transit restrictions and capacity constraints, while unlocking South America's economic potential by linking it directly to global markets, especially Asia. As of March 2025, the railway remains in the planning phase, poised to reshape regional trade dynamics if it overcomes significant hurdles. The railway's core mission is to enhance trade efficiency by slashing transport times and costs for South American exporters. Brazil, 
a powerhouse in soybean, iron ore, and petroleum exports, could reduce shipping times to China by weeks, bypassing the Panama Canal's 80-kilometer route, which saw a 29% transit drop in 2023-2024 due to water shortages. Bolivia, landlocked and economically challenged, envisions itself as a pivotal trade hub, bridging two oceans and invigorating its economy, potentially doubling its GDP through infrastructure development and transit revenues. Peru stands to solidify its role as a Pacific gateway, facilitating exports like copper and agricultural goods. Feasibility studies supported by a $3 million grant from the Latin American Development Bank, CAF, in 2019, Project The Corridor could handle 10 million tons of cargo annually, with Brazil alone contributing up to 50 million tons, according to Bolivian government estimates. This capacity could diversify trade routes, reducing dependence on maritime choke points vulnerable to climate change and geopolitical tensions. The project's scope is staggering. Traversing diverse terrains from Brazil's fertile plains to Bolivia's rugged Altiplano and Peru's coastal deserts, crossing the Andes Mountains along the way. Proponents argue it could integrate South America's economies, fostering regional cooperation and attracting foreign investment. China's Belt and Road Initiative has emerged as a key backer, with companies like China Railway expressing interest alongside European nations such as Spain and Germany, which conducted early technical assessments. Yet, the central bi-oceanic railway faces daunting obstacles. Estimated costs exceed 10 billion. Some projections reach 14 billion, demanding robust financing that remains uncommitted. Environmental risks are profound, with roots potentially slicing through the Amazon rainforest and Andean ecosystems, threatening biodiversity and indigenous communities. Political instability further complicates progress. Bolivia's 2019 crisis following Morales' ousting disrupted momentum and aligning the interests of Brazil Bolivia and Peru remains a diplomatic challenge. As of March 2025, the Central Bioceanic Railway embodies South America's ambition for economic sovereignty and global relevance. If realized, it could shift trade paradigms, offering a resilient alternative to maritime routes and bolstering the continent's exporters. Beyond these flagship projects, other routes have been floated. Colombia has proposed an underground maglev railway to move containers across its territory. It remains conceptual to this date. Arctic routes, such as the Northwest Passage and Northern Sea Route, are gaining attention as melting ice opens new pathways. But they are seasonal, hazardous, and lack infrastructure. The Suez Canal, while a competitor for Asia to U.S. East Coast traffic, does not serve Pacific Atlantic needs directly. These alternatives signal a shift toward canal multipolarity. If realized, they could dilute the Panama Canal's 6% share of global trade, forcing the ACP to adapt through innovations like water-saving locks or competitive pricing. Geopolitically, projects backed by China and Russia challenge U.S. influence in the Americas, potentially escalating tensions. Economically, successful alternatives could lower shipping costs and enhance resilience against disruptions. Their high costs and long timelines temper expectations. The Panama Canal's century-long dominance faces growing scrutiny as countries like Nicaragua, Mexico, and South American nations propose ambitious alternatives. Nicaragua's canal offers a direct maritime rival. Mexico's solution provides a scalable land bridge and the Bioceanic Railway reimagines regional trade flows. Each project carries significant challenges financial, environmental, and logistical, but reflects a broader trend of nations seeking to diversify trade routes amid Panama's limitations. As of March 24, 2025, these initiatives remain in various stages of development with none poised to supplant the canal imminently. However, their progress underscores a future where global shipping may no longer hinge on a single choke point, heralding a more distributed and resilient maritime network. The multi-billion dollar cost of replacing the Panama Canal demands innovative alternatives that address its vulnerabilities, water scarcity, capacity limits, and geopolitical tensions. Mexico's interoceanic corridor offers a scalable land-based solution, while Nicaragua's revived canal proposal ambitiously seeks a maritime rival, and the central bi-oceanic railway envisions a transformative South American trade network. Each project, though distinct, 
underscores a global shift toward diversified roots, promising resilience and economic growth. Yet, their success hinges on overcoming financial, environmental and political hurdles. As these initiatives progress, they may not fully supplant the canal but could redefine global trade, ensuring connectivity adapts to a rapidly changing world. Okay, thank you for watching. This is Megalith. Please help our channel by subscribing, pressing that like button, and leave us your comments beneath.